Xavier Martin, the Vice President of New South Wales Farmers, thanks for joining us this morning on Flow. No worries, Ricky. What, what is the latest situation, first of all, with the mice themselves? How are things going as the weather cools down but, and the, the rain starts falling? Well, certainly there's reports of mice uh, numbers dropping in areas. In some areas, they've almost disappeared. There's still a few patches where they're exploding. Uh, but look, we're expecting in midwinter that they would, uh, you know, go down their warrens, down their mouse holes. Uh, they've obviously been lining the seeds and pods and up, a, up around the holes for a while and getting ready to overwinter. And uh, so we knew we knew they were going to be harder to um, to bait and uh, harder to assess the level of risk at this time. And that's why quite a few farmers decided that it was an unmanageable risk and they wouldn't plant certain paddocks or even whole farms in some cases. Yeah, right. And so then there's been this setback with the APVMA with bromodialone as well, I understand. Uh, They're not going to approve the use of that? Or is it really a setback? Does it mean we redouble our efforts on uh, zinc phosphide? Well, look, farmers are always looking for new tools. We make a living out of good science, healthy plants and healthy animals. And so we... We trust the scientists to get it right and we're not totally surprised that given that this product, uh, bromodialone, is not used anywhere around the globe in a broad acre sense. So, um, yeah, look, it's one of those things that you wonder if there might have been permanent conditions that may have allowed it to have been used for a particular purpose, but obviously the science judged not that it wasn't uh, reasonable to use. And certainly our members under a previous permit had reported problems with secondary to- toxicity to domestic and native animals. Yeah. I so we, were, we weren't totally surprised. And uh, look, we welcome the Minister's uh, commitment to transfer that $50 million that was allocated for bromodialone has been added to the $100 million uh, for zinc phosphide. And we welcome the Minister's announcement of that. The government's now made a meaningful down payment that will allow uh, farmers to manage this plague and husband the crop through, you know, be good stewards of the winter crop through to harvest. That was our great fear, and we do think that probably about a billion dollars been, has been taken off the winter crop already in terms of lost hectares. And, and replanting, there's been a lot of replanting going on, not just in patches in some circumstances, but in whole paddocks and whole farms, because the crop's been wiped out as it emerged or even the seed dug up out of the furrow and eat. Yeah, well I was hearing a story from I think one of your members was saying even as the machine was seeding it into the ground the mice were getting it, no sooner as it landed in the ground they are picking it out. Oh look there's been a new uh, additional task every morning when the air seeders uh, the seeding machines are kicked up, you've got to check every hose that delivers the seed isn't blocked with a mouse because <laughs> they get up, get, get up there during the night and uh, Oh, look, it's been a challenge. And, uh, look, some areas are finished their winter crop sowing and uh, are now, uh, you know, watching really closely the level of uh, mice infestation. Other areas are not even half sown yet and are trying hard to manage the bait availability and uh, the timing because the showers of rain... The rain actually washes the concentrate off the bait and therefore inactivates the bait and so it's not desirable to apply bait either just before or during rain so with showers coming through the state uh, coming through eastern australia uh, farmers are watching the skies very closely as to the timing of any mouse bait activity that needs to be done yeah so it's a bit similar to when you're spraying pesticide you don't want the rain to wash that straight off Exactly, but even more so, Ricky, because farmers have to plan probably at least three nights ahead and preferably four or five nights ahead to make sure that they've got a maximum chance of the mice coming out and taking the bait. Yeah. Now, on the baiting side, just on bromodialone, it is possible to get a permit, I think. There's not many given, but it's not totally off the cards for some farmers if they desperately need it. Is that right? Look, I haven't heard that, but certainly uh, the same technology is second generation anticoagulant is available out of the supermarkets um, uh, you know in the form of a bit of wax blocks and and uh, certainly under that label you can use in the roof and walls of, of buildings houses sheds yep. uh, anywhere where domestic or native animals can't uh, access it 
Uh, so it is used around, um, you know, even in probably hay sheds and things like that if it's in the appropriate um, uh, traps. Yeah, yeah special anything. traps or whatever else that you can, that maybe a magpie or the farm dog's not going to get into. That's exactly right. Yep. There's a special, very limited use, Ricky, that yep. uh, is available for that for that uh, chemistry, and uh, and really that's the case right around the globe. Yeah, sure. And so the zinc phosphide, the doubling of that's been helpful. And I saw a video on social media, farmer showing plenty of dead mice on the floor of his farm shed. So it still seems to be pretty effective. But the Minister for Agriculture was talking, I guess before he got COVID, he was more popular, uh, more out there in the media. Uh, he um, was saying it was like napalm, the bromad- bromodialone uh, toxicity. So I guess even the government acknowledged from the get-go it was a pretty highfalutin opportunity to try and use that. Oh, look, we were critical of the Minister's decision around bromodialone and applying for the permit because we had a here and now problem where the winter crop was... uh, We were racing to get the winter crop in across the state, 6 million hectares, and farmers were pulling out of it as the Minister was making these announcements. And they're basically too late. You know, we've been telling the Minister for months, the the New South Wales Government for months, that uh, we had a plague. And they kept talking about it being a problem. Uh, so, look, we welcomed the Minister getting it right eventually, um, getting the support for zinc phosphide. We are concerned that suppliers are, are telling us that the uh, concentrate for the zinc phosphide is at its limit in terms of accessing out of India, the main uh, supplier. And uh, therein lies a problem that if you start doubling the dosage, either in the kilograms per hectare that have been put on or in the concentration on the on what's a, a de- devitalised wheat seed as the bait. Uh, if you're putting on 50 uh, grams per kilo instead of 25 grams per kilo, you very quickly can only treat a quarter of the hectares that you have been with the standard zinc phosphide bait. Mm. So at the moment we're, we're going through 70 to 80,000 kilos a day, 70 to 80,000 hectares a day being right. applied. Yep. And if you follow that level of concentration, we'd very quickly get down to less than 20,000 kilos a day being treated. And therein lies a problem when uh, with a plague uh, that's uh, spreading. We've seen it spread into Victoria and Queensland. And, uh, you know, it's emerging uh, more widespread and potentially exploding in the spring if we don't get it right through the winter. Well, did the government do enough on that front? Because they were stockpiling bromodialone, I believe. They said, we've got this much we've put aside, but did they do enough to stockpile zinc phosphide? Uh, I'm not aware of any stockpiling of zinc phosphide. Uh, To the contrary, I'm aware that there's delays in accessing it for many farmers. Many farmers have actually... uh, uh, put orders in and thought that it should arrive just in time for sowing and w- when the sowings got underway, uh, whether it's canola or wheat or barley, um, the bait has not been available and by the time the bait has turned up a week or two later, mm. the crop's so badly damaged they've had to re-sow it. So the government just seemed to have put all their eggs in the bromodialone basket. They were, I'm sure they were saying they had put stockpiles aside, uh, but you didn't hear anything about them putting zinc phosphide aside to make sure there was enough when it was needed. That's correct. And look, uh, the minister obviously had his advice. The government had their advice as to what they should do and how they should do it. We uh, had questions around that. Um, we empathise that the minister's been unwell lately and we welcome that uh, you know he has announced the $50 million that was it allocated to Bromo Dialone is going to be moved over to the uh, 100 million for zinc phosphide. And look, we thank the New South Wales government for making a down payment uh, on getting this plague under control. They've got a good system in place for householders claiming a rebate through service in New South Wales and for shop owners. And, you know, we just need to get this uh, 50% rebate underway for farmers on zinc phosphide. Yep. Well, Xavier Martin, thanks for speaking with us today. We'll keep in touch with New South Wales farmers about how this is progressing as the as the weather warms up. Yeah, thanks.